flower friends jesse from bear flower farm here and man it is blizzarding outside for those of you who live along the mid-atlantic or east coast you'll know that this was the storm that people were talking about for over a week and it was like how much snow are we gonna get because uh they couldn't figure out which model was was gonna be accurate and so um we got pretty lucky because i think we have about four inches outside but you know for me no better time than to go back to the planting piece of the cut flower farm i have my coffee here as well as a cookie so i feel pretty prepared and ready to go today i want to talk about money and specifically making money during your first year of cut flower farming i know that many people either go into the mentality or hear people saying that you should expect to invest into your farm. You really shouldn't expect a positive return on your investment for at least a couple of years. And while I definitely agree that that is, you know, a good mindset to go into because it helps you save and budget before you get into cut flower farming, I also think that there are cases where if you're smart about how you spend, you can certainly make money during your first year. And that is my goal this year. I want to more than break even, I want to make money and I want to go through the process of me thinking through um, just the costs and you know how I arrive at that conclusion. What's actually funny is that what really got me thinking about this topic was because um, we are under contract for a house that sits on three acres right now. And the only thing that's really stopping from that that contract moving forward is the fact that uh, the leach field for the septic system failed during our inspection. And we're unsure as to whether or not the seller agrees with that report. Um, I don't know how one disputes it, but they're getting their person out. And so in the worst case scenario, they might not want to pay for a leach field. And, you know, in the world of home buying and selling, it's usually the seller who does pay for a new leach field, but a leach field is one of the most expensive parts of a septic system. And because this field is so long, you know, we're talking about plus $20,000. So I wanted to see from my cut flower farm, um, because there's an opportunity cost in terms of giving up a piece of land because you don't want to fork over 20K, which is a lot of money, but you know, could my flower farm potentially make up that difference and how long would that take? So that's actually how this exercise came to be. I'm actually a finance uh, major by trade, and I grew up in a household where money was at the forefront of a lot of conversations. We were very frugal. My parents came to the co this country with $20 in their pockets. And so, you know, money was definitely a topic of conversation that um, my parents talked about with me when I was very young, like starting at the age of six, right? So I've always had this mindset of how do I spend and invest that money wisely? And when you start a business, Money is so important because the number one reason why businesses fail is because they run out of cash. So their runway, which is basically the amount of time that they have left before all of their cash is exhausted, basically disappears. And you see this a lot with companies where they start out with this growth mentality mindset, right? And what I'm saying is that they're pouring in, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. They're going into debt to do this because they're thinking that if I put all this money up front, I'm going to create the market, I'm going to get the demand, and then they're going to buy my stuff. And then I'm going to be able to make up for that debt later on. And, you know, it does work for some companies, but it doesn't work for a lot. And so cut flower farming falls into this group called a lifestyle type of company, which is, you know, you're not expecting hockey stick growth, right? Meaning like overnight, you're going to make a billion dollars. No, cut flower farming is a long-term play. So not only are you putting your labor in, right, which puts you at risk of burnout, but you're also, um, you're also trying to cultivate a market that does exist for cut flowers, but you're trying to get them to buy from you, right? And I view that as every single year, you know, you might be buying a couple thousand more bulbs or you might be expanding your production, but by no means are you going to take out, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars of debt to, to expand your business. Now, I know that this example might seem a little bit unrealistic, but I say this because I think a lot of people go in into their first year and spend more than they anticipate. And I'll bring up an example. So I was watching um, Living on a Prayer Farm. Her YouTube channel is really great. And she recently did a video on her finances basically for the first year of cut flower farming. And it kind of blew my mind because she spent over $17,000 in costs for her cut flower farming. And how much revenue did she bring in? She brought in 
basically like I think it was three four thousand dollars right now three four thousand dollars is nothing to sneeze at but when you think about it in the context of seventeen thousand dollars like yes there are some upfront costs that she could not avoid but if you're going to be selling let's say even five to seven thousand dollars next year like you've got at least three years to climb out of the hole that you made for yourself in year one. And, you know, there are some costs that you still need to have year after year, like compost, fertilizer, right? So what you want to do is avoid digging yourself such a deep hole that it feels like it's impossible to climb out of after. And so the, this concept of profit is actually a relatively easy concept, right? It's literally how much money are you bringing in at the top? We call it revenue minus your costs is equal to your profit. And the problems start creeping in in the cost piece because it's like, oh, a seed packet here or there. Um, I need to buy some more like fertilizer or I see a really cute prop at home goods for my farmer's market. Um, the irrigation breaks, right? You have unexpected things happen. And, you know, on their own, they might not seem like a lot of money, but when you add them up, similar to the way that living on a prayer farm did in her video, she started realizing like, oh my God, like, it's a lot of money. If there's anything that you're going to get out of this video, I want it to be the ability to answer two questions, which I'm going to walk in detail how I'm going to answer them. The first is, do you know what your costs are going to be for the upcoming 2022 season? Whether or not you're a new cut flower gardener, it's your first year, or you're a veteran cut flower farmer. So when I say, do you know what your costs are going to be? You're never going to hit it 100% on the mark for what it will be uh, at the end of the season, right? But you can get pretty close. And I'm talking about getting into the details because everything at scale adds up, right? So for example, a sleeve or, or like a set of sleeves for your bouquets, right? Usually comes in a pack of 50 for $8. Like, sure, it doesn't sound like a lot of money. But what if, if you're selling a thousand bouquets? What if you're selling 500 bouquets, right? All of a sudden, like that's a few hundred dollars that you're just spending without realizing that, hey, it adds up, right? And then the second question is realistically, do you know how much revenue you can bring in for the year? And I've talked about this in other videos bef uh, before, so I'll link them in terms of how you can build a customer base. But I am of this huge mind. I, I am of this huge mentality that if you build it, they may not come, right? And that happened to me in my first business where I spent all this time building my business, building the product and everything. I launched a site and it was like crickets because no one knew about my product, right? So there is that work that you have to do upfront to cultivate your customer base. But besides that, right? Like, are you doing any farmer's markets? Are you doing a CSA, right? So if you did CSA, then you obviously already have had revenue that comes in. So what is a realistic amount of money that you expect you can make from your flowers? And then at the end, you're gonna look at how much money am I gonna spend for costs? How much money do I anticipate to bring in and what is that gap, right? Because that gap determines whether or not you make money, you break even, or you lose money. For me, there are three main buckets of cost in 2022. And because I am a first year cut flower farmer, the majority of my costs are going to come from preparing the land. Now within the land, I break it out to everything that I need to set up including rental equipment. So I don't need to go out and buy a tractor. I don't even need to go out and buy a tiller. Now my parents have a tiller, which I can borrow, but let's say I didn't have a tiller. I can go to my local hardware store like Home Depot and rent a tiller for a day. So you can see here, I actually have two pieces of equipment that I'm planning on renting. I'm planning on renting a sod cutter uh, because I am on quite a bit of acreage with just lawn. I don't have enough time to do no till and cover it with cardboard. So rather than tilling in the grass and uh, potentially having weeds come up from the grass, I'm going to just remove the layer of sod and then I am going to till it afterwards with my parents' tiller. And so the sod cutter costs about $100 a day for rental. I even have the location in which I can rent it. They have two of these there. And then we're also gonna rent a trencher to be able to put in irrigation. Um, and of course you can lay irrigation on top of the soil, but we're gonna be mowing the lawn. It's gonna be a pain to lift the, the irrigation or you know weed whack around it. So we're just gonna bury it to make it easy. Now you can see in the other part of land, I have the compost, I have the fertilizer, but I even have things like tea posts, 
drip tape irrigation and I get down to the nitty gritty like I know I'm going to definitely need at least one wheelbarrow. Um, it's crazy how advanced wheelbarrows have become because I remember like 10 years ago my parents bought, bought one for 50 bucks. It's hard to find one below a hundred dollars nowadays um, but I'm even thinking about like what is the most efficient kind of wheelbarrow that I have so rather than having one with just one wheel um, I want to have one with four wheels because then not only can I wheel it around to spread compost but I could potentially also use it to wheel around my buckets, right? So just being forward thinking like that in terms of how you can make that dollar stretch the furthest by buying one thing that can accomplish many tasks, right? So um, you can see I also have hose and rakes. Um, I have my earthway seeder in there for direct sewing um, just to reduce the time labor aspect of it. And then of course I have a little bit of buffer here of $300, but you can see that total land prep comes out to close to $2,500. And while I don't expect this land prep to be as high in the year after, I started thinking about what that could look like in year two, and it's still probably going to be at least $1,000, right? So that tells me right then and there, every single year, I'm going to be expecting to put in at least $1,000 into my land. Now, the other bucket for me is what I'm calling bouquets, and that is all the costs that are going to go into the ability to produce one bouquet. And so, of course, we're going to start from the very beginning, which is seed, right? Seed is oftentimes the place where most people get a little bit spend happy. Um, they see all of the seed and they, you know, they, they buy all of it, right? And truth be told, if you're first year flower farmer, you probably want to start on the smaller side, which, you know, for me, I try to do that. And I still feel like that I'm probably growing more varieties than I honestly should, right? But I am moderating how much I am buying in quantity because I know that um, every seed that I don't use, while I could potentially use it the year after, the germination rates go down, right? So it's fine to have a few hundred or even, you know, even up to like a thousand seeds left over but you don't want to be buying let's say like a thousand dollars worth of seed and only using like three hundred dollars worth right so for me i've already bought all of my seeds that i need i spent three hundred dollars and note that i did not buy any tubers this year i did buy some like tulip bulbs and ranunculus corns but this was actually before i even considered starting a cut flower farm so those were kind of just for my own enjoyment and i'm gonna experiment with how much vase life i can get out of tulip and all that stuff but i am focusing on annuals because seeds are the cheapest annuals are literally almost like bread for cut flower because they have such a shortened period of time to grow that they're going to put all their energy into producing blooms versus if you get like a perennial or a biennial, right? You're not going to get as many good blooms during the first year. So that is something I might think about later down the road, but this year I'm focusing my efforts on flowers that are going to give me my short-term bang for my buck return on investment. Um, of course, I also have seed starting here. So I'm putting the cost of a soil blocker with with potting mix and all that stuff that I need to make the soil block blocks. I also have buckets here. In my last video, I figured out that I'm gonna need about 20 buckets for harvest. So I'm gonna add in another five for buffer. So let's just say 25 buckets at $3 each, right? That gets me to $75. Sleeves here. Um, sleeves are, are um, at Johnny's 50 for 14. I saw them on, I think Nashville, paper for $7. I am assuming that I'm going to buy close to 15 sets of 50 to get me to 250. Um, instead of using stickers, I'm going to use one stamp. Um, so I'm going to have an ink pad to stamp my logo on with my website. Um, it just reduces waste here. Um, and then I even have my flower food and CBB and tablets for zinnias, right? So small expenses here, but just good to know how much I might need a fork over. And that gets me to a total of $825 for my bouquets, which I am thinking of doing 50 per every other week for my farmer's market. Now, the last bucket for me is farmer's market because this is gonna be my main outlet to sell. I am not doing a CSA. I do not plan on doing a U-pick or really having people come onto my property. I think that that is just a whole other layer of consideration from liability, insurance to, you know, even just like maintaining the farm because you don't know what kind of visitors you're going to get, right? So again, might be down the road in a couple of years, but year one, I'm going to focus on farmer's market. So for me, the booth fee for farmers for, for the farmer's market is really, really affordable. It is $350 for 16 
16 weeks, um, like unheard of for me. Um, I said in another video that I used to spend $300 for a weekend to sell. So this feels like a deal. I know that not everyone's going to be able to get that kind of deal. Um, I got rid of my canopy from the days when I did craft fairs. So I need to get a new canopy. They usually run out around a hundred dollars, um, a banner. So that's one of the things that I learned from selling soap at craft fairs is that you need to have a banner with your name, with a little bit of like a mission or just like a tagline of what you do. It just helps bring people to your booth and give them an idea of what you're doing without too much effort. So I'm budgeting a hundred dollars there because I've seen that that's what the going rate for those are. Um, and then of course your tablecloth, your props, that stuff adds up. And I remember just going to a store and being like, oh, that's really cute. Like, you know, that could work for my, my table at the farmer's market or, oh, you know, that little basket there would be really cute. That stuff adds up. So I am budgeting a total of $650 for the farmer's markets alone. And I think for most people doing farmer's market, markets that number is going to be over a thousand dollars because typically the booth fee for a farmer's market is anywhere from fifty dollars to even a hundred dollars a weekend depending on just how that farmer's market structures their costs so that brings me to a grand total of four thousand four hundred forty one dollars for just the costs alone. Now, I am not even baking here the mortgage that I'm gonna pay on that house with the land. Um, we, we're gonna have well water, so we technically don't pay for water, but obviously maintenance of the well um, is a factor. Um, and I'm not paying for like, uh, I'm not even counting lights for seed starting and all that stuff, right? Um, I actually have a lot of that shelving and infrastructure um, from the inventory that I used to house for my other business. And then I have a lot of grow lights because I used to do hydroponics and I used to seed start for my vegetables, right? So I already have all those, but if you don't, you know, expect to spend close to, I would say anywhere from like three to $500 for good quality shelving if you want a few of them. And then maybe like another hundred or $2 for lights. Um, so, you know, that easily brings you to at least $500. Living on a prayer farm said that I think she spent a thousand dollars for seed starting. So that gives you a general range. Now, one thing that nearly everyone, including myself, when I first started my other soap business was we did not factor in labor. And that is my biggest takeaway from my last business, which is from the get go, I am going to value my time and my labor. And I'm going to value it at close to minimum wage at $15. So what I did here was I have another line item here that, that says labor. And you can see when I do the calculations of labor, I'm actually being very generous with my time. I'm saying that every single week, I'm only going to spend 20 hours and I'm going to do it for $15 an hour. Um, and overall, that gets me to about 300 hours for the season, which honestly is below what I think I'm going to spend. So for example, um, the markets are every other week. I'm going to spend about six hours at the market. So what I'm saying is 14 hours for, for the rest of the week to, um, to, to plant, to, to cut bouquets, right? To make the bouquets. Um, it's probably realistically going to be 30 hours a week, but I'm just going to say 20 hours a week at $15 an hour for a total of 300 hours for the season gets me to $4,500, which is more than the cost of everything else that I'm putting into the farm. And so when you look at that total with labor, I'm close to $9,000, which honestly is a lot more than what I thought. In fact, without labor, I thought I'd be only spending maybe $2,000, $3,000 stretching it. But it wasn't until I started looking into how much does compost cost per cubic yard? Um, how much does, does that transportation cost? And realistically, where will I get it from? I actually call these companies and ask, hey, in late March, are you guys going to have compost available? Are you guys going to have it available for delivery? What does that look like? So I was able to put all these costs together. And another unanticipated cost was T-posts. I did not realize how expensive T-posts were. And yes, you can get away without using T-posts, but I am budgeting them in right now because I know for Snapdragons, I'm going to need netting, which by the way, I haven't even put in here. So I should put that number in here. Um, I'm also going to need to corral like for zinnias, right? So the ability to have T-posts spaced every eight feet just makes it a lot easier for you to um, do all of that stuff to maintain straight stems, right? So like I said, like I've gotten very detailed into what that land setup process is going to look like. I am literally envisioning, okay, I have flat land that's just grass 
what are the various steps that I need to take in order to convert that to beds for flower farming, right? And then I write everything down in terms of what I'm going to need. And that's how I make the spreadsheet over here. Now that I've estimated my total costs for 2022, and let's just for rounding purposes say it's going to be $10,000, which honestly is a lot of money. Here you're at $10,000. And the question is, how many bouquets do I need to sell in order to break even? And I know that $10,000 sounds like a lot of money, but I actually have the confidence that I can do it because I sold homemade soap before at $5 a bar and I was able to sell over $10,000 in a given year. Now, we hustled. I mean, we were waking up at the crack of dawn. We were going to all these craft fairs. And I would say that we probably did about a dozen um, that summer. And after a while, like you get the hang of it, right? So I know that if I could do it with soap, I could do it with bouquets, assuming that I do have a decent amount of traffic coming through that farmer's market. But let's break this down because I'm planning on selling each bouquet for $20. I have a separate video where I talk about how I, how I get to that number, how I calculate how many bouquets a week um, I need to make and therefore how many stems I need to grow. So I'll link that in the description below. But what I'm assuming here is um, at the $4,441 cost, if I divide that by $20 per bouquet, that tells me I need to sell at least 222 bouquets throughout the season in order to break even with those costs. Now, because I will be doing farmer's markets 15 times throughout the season, so I'm doing it every other week, that means at each market, I need to sell at least 15 bouquets to break even. Now, I also do this baking into the labor costs here. So now I've effectively doubled my costs, right? So um, the total cost is 8,941. You do the same math. 8,941 divided by 20, and that gets me to 447 bouquets throughout the season. With 15 farmer's markets that I'll be at, that means I need to sell at least 30 bouquets at each market. And now the good news is when I do that gut check, I was planning on having ready 50 bouquets a week, which means that assuming if I could sell 50 of them, I will definitely make a profit. But at least now I know that I need at least 30 bouquets in order to make the effort worth it if I want to break even. Right now, you might be in a different situation where you're saying like, I know I'm only going to be able to generate 20 bouquets and that's fine and I'm okay with operating a loss. But the, the point is that you enter into the season being realistic and honest with yourself as to whether or not you can make money or you might be breaking even or losing money. Now back to my original question as to whether or not my cut flower farm profit could potentially pay for that septic tank leach field repair should we get to the point where the seller doesn't want to replace it. So what I did was I looked at, let's say that I bring 50 bouquets to the market and the perfect scenario where all 50 bouquets are sold, how much additional money am I going to make knowing that I need to sell at least 30 bouquets a week to break even, right? So I have 20 extra basically that's profit right now. So at $20, we're talking about $400 extra per market. Since I'm going to do 15 total markets, we're talking about $6,000 of profit from those additional 20 bouquets. It's a little bit honestly on the lower side. Um, I know in the grand scheme, like the ability to sell $6,000 for first year cut flower farming is amazing. But realistically, right, if a leach field is going to cost $20,000 and I can only make about $6,000 extra for profit, we're talking about at least three years for me to pay back for that septic tank. And what that tells me is either, um, you know, I've baked a lot of best case scenario here for the revenue piece of it, but it also means that I need to think about other ways to sell my bouquets outside of the flower farm. So um, if I want to decrease the time that it would take to pay back for a $20,000 leach field, I've got to find other ways to sell my bouquets and sell more, right? So I am growing enough flowers that I can do more than 50 bouquets. And I think that that's the good part where now I know um, I'm going to have enough stems to do it. So I just have to figure out the outlet to do it. I mentioned earlier that I was curious about like what year two would look like. So I took out a lot of the stuff that is a year one type of expense and looking at year two, you know, we're looking at a total of uh, $2,670 for the land piece and the seed starting piece. Um, and then with labor, so let's just assume the same amount of labor, $4,500, we're still getting to $7,170 
for the total cost, right? And that is really only about $2,000 less than the first year. So the reason why I bring this point up is because there's this mentality, I am investing to my farm. I will eventually make it up by selling flowers. And what I'm here to tell you is that your costs year to year, if you include labor, are actually not gonna be that much different than your first year, yes. If you're gonna put up like a hoop house or have like big irrigation infrastructure expenses, you're not gonna have those repeatedly year after year, but you're still gonna have some significant level of expenses just from composting or just from putting enough compost on your beds, from fertilizing, um, from like the seeds, The you're probably gonna wanna buy more bulbs, you're probably gonna wanna buy tubers, right? All that stuff adds up and the less of a hole you can dig yourself in the first year, the better off you are in following years, not only to make money, but to also have the ability to invest a little bit more into your farm. What are my lessons learned from this exercise? I think there are two main key lessons for me. The first is that we all have a tendency to underestimate our costs, even for someone like me who has a business background, a finance major, someone who has run another side business. And I feel like I have a pretty good handle of costs and numbers. I I underestimated how much I was gonna spend for the, the prepping of the land as well as just the bouquet piece of it, right? So I was initially gonna fund my flower flower farm bank account with $2,000. And now I think I'm gonna pad it a little bit more because I'm really not gonna be bringing any revenue in until my first market on May 1st. And most of the money that I'm gonna spend is gonna be before May 1st, right? So I wanna make sure I have enough money to be able to make those things happen for May 1st. The second thing is I realized that the farmer's market outlet might not be enough for me if I have ambitious goals of making more than, let's just say $6,000 of profit. Um, and this is because uh, even if everything goes right at the farmer's markets and I, and I, out, I completely sell out the 50 bouquets, I'm at $6,000, which means a three-year payback for that leach field if we pay for it. I think there are two things to stress about with my personal situation coming into my first year cut flower farming. And the first is that I mean business. I mean, clearly I am not here as a side hustle to maybe make money. I am here to make money because I know that cut flower farming is very, very labor intensive. And I know I'm gonna be spending a lot of blood, sweat, tears. Now, obviously there's a passion behind the flower aspect of it, but at the end of the day, if I'm gonna be spending 30 plus hours a week, you know, I, I want it to amount to something. And you know, this is not just a couple of hundred dollars I'm throwing down, right? Like clearly I'm gonna be throwing five figures, $10,000 as an investment to make this happen, right? And then the other piece is that I am not going into debt to do this. I I am what they call bootstrapping, right? So with my own money, I am going to make sure that I manage my costs so that I don't have to borrow money in order to, um, to make my dream come true. And I really discourage you from borrowing money with this mentality that I'm gonna make it back later, just because you can always start small, make a profit and then grow from there, right? Um, and then the second piece is this opportunity cost of labor when you do not value your labor. So. I could take out the labor piece of the equation and automatically it looks like I'm making money, but really I'm not. Because think about when you need to scale, like let's say you're successful and you wanna hire someone else. All of a sudden now, like you're looking at the labor costs and it really throws off what the profitability of your farm looks like, right? So when you start thinking about labor from day one, your own labor, I really think it puts you in a position to help your farm grow versus you know being stuck with I can't hire anyone because it's so expensive because I haven't factored in my own labor right so just a couple of things to think about don't don't devalue yourself is really the takeaway at the end of the day I feel like money as a whole is just something that is not discussed as much as it should be especially when it comes to businesses and cut flower farming. For me, I really haven't found many videos out there that talk about the money aspect of it outside of year end. This is how much money we made, how much money we spent. So one of the focuses that I'm going to have for this YouTube video is the business aspect of it and 
if like time permitting, my plan is for every single farmer's market, I'm going to break down what the costs were for that farmer's market, how much I yielded and, you know, how much to this spreadsheet realistically I'm tracking towards, right? So um, obviously that's going to be in a few months because it is still January right now. It is still snowing outside, but if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribing for more videos like this. See you next time.